Access more. I had sent in a picture of me and my younger brother. So they put that in the magazine. Most loved photo. And guess who was the cover of that magazine? <laughs> What's it? <laughs> it was me. Yeah. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bury podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Season two is about finding purpose. Come join us. Hi friends, I wanted to do a little something different with my podcast. I really wanted to dig deep with one expert for the whole season with things that are important to you and me. And if you listen to season one, you got to hear from my friend, Tara Lee Cobble, share all about the Trinity. We had great conversations about our faith and we learned a ton about the Bible. I received thousands of questions from you, our incredible listeners at my website, Candice.com. One of the most popular topics was how do you balance it all? These questions were about how to be a great mom, wife, maintaining a career, showing up for friends and having hopes, dreams and desires all at the same time. Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. <laughs> but my friend Heather McFadden will be joining me this season to talk all about it. Heather is an author, a mom of four boys, and the host of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. She's been podcasting for years and has interviewed hundreds of guests. In fact, I got to be her guest way back in October of 2018. Before we jump in, I want you to know Access More is the preferred place to listen to and watch my podcast. At accessmore.com, you can find other great faith-based podcasts on audio and video. Just go to accessmore.com. Heather, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. You're, it's so fun to be here with you. Well, I'm so glad. We have so many incredible things to talk about, which is really about finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I would like for our listeners to hear a little bit more about you. We want to get to know you and I want to know how you, how you started podcasting. Well, we got to go back. We got to okay. go back to the early years of the internet to when I would blog online. Uh, I had four boys really young. Actually, I was pregnant with my fourth boy, had been writing online for three years. And I got one of those emails that seems like, you know, the ones that came from the prince in Africa who's going to give you millions of dollars? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, is this for a real? <laughs> yeah. Is this a real opportunity or is this pretend? And it was from a literary agent who had seen my blog online and he asked if I'd ever considered writing a book. Well, first I did my due diligence. Is this actually the right. agent, he was very popular at the time, had well-known authors that he represented and it felt surreal. I mean, here I was in the throes of little boys and yeah, <laughs> you're like, I'm just everything. blogging along yeah, and just then writing about my life. And he's asking about publishing and I was a little taken aback. And I reached out to my one friend in the publishing world and I said, what do you think? And she said, Heather, this is a really big opportunity but I also know publishing and it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I thought, how hard could it be to write a book? I mean, I write <laughs> all the time online. This is easy. And she said, well, what if you took like waited five years? And that felt like she said, why don't you wait a billion years <laughs> to write yes. a book? I thought, oh, I'll miss the opportunity if I wait. So I hired a sitter to come watch because by then my fourth boy arrived. So I had a newborn, a two-year-old, a four-year-old, a six-year-old. <laughs> Bless that babysitter. She's yes. amazing. Um, and I would go to Panera and I would just type away. And I worked on my first book proposal and I sent it to him. And our So let me back yeah, up a second yeah. because you had an agent reach out, but you still had to write a book proposal. So oh, it's yes. not like they offered you a book deal. This whole process. Okay. I've learned so much yeah. in all of the years, but yeah, you, it's a, a lot of steps okay. are required okay. for any published book. So you're just shelf. working on the proposal, not the even proposal, the book. Which a proposal is an outline and sample chapters. And so at the time I was writing on a site called God Centered Mom mm -hmm. with this whole concept of God in the center instead of me or my kids. Yep. And so I'm writing it. We have our first feedback session and it was rough. Okay. <laughs> and I can still vividly remember some of the criticism. Uh, I wrote like a 50 year old woman, apparently. I'm not the female James Dobson. 
like <laughs> hard words. Wow. Yeah. Hard words. And so given the fact that I was new to this, I never had a desire to write a book. Mm-hmm. I shut my laptop. Actually, at first I tried to work on it after the call. And then I just felt so much shame and overwhelm and defeat I shut the laptop. I called my husband. I said, I'm going to go get a pedicure. I'm not writing a book. <laughs> like, this is too hard. And he said, well, maybe it's like other art forms and there's rough drafts and mm-hmm. you have to learn the process. Like yeah. this isn't an automatic success thing. So I took some time away. I read some books on writing. I tried again and another feedback session. It still needed work. And I said, forget it. I think this is a distraction from my actual assignment to be a mom of these four little boys. Mm -hmm. Then I realized, no, I'm spending time scrolling on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have time. I have margins that I could work on this. So I put all my energy in. I said, I said no to some opportunities and I'm going all in on writing this book. And I told the agent and we were going to meet at a blogging conference. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to meet with publishers and pitch this book. And I get there and instead I had a meeting with him in the lobby of the hotel. And he's telling me that given the last year and a half that it took for me to finally come around, all the mom bloggers had been signed on by publishers and there wasn't space anymore. And I thought, there it is. I I missed it. You missed the window. I missed the opportunity. Can you relate to that feeling of like, this is, I'm going to miss out. I'm, oh. I'm stepping, I stepped away for my kids and now the opportunities are yes. going to pass me by. I mean, for that very reason, because I'd worked my whole life and then decided not to work and yeah. stay home and raise my kids. Yeah. And I've always loved working and I wanted to work again. And that was, that felt like a really big sacrifice. Yeah. And I felt like I was in, had the momentum of a successful career coming off full house. And then it's like to stop and say, no, I'm going to take a 10 year break. <laughs> Just a little break here. Oh, it, I was heartbroken over it. And I didn't know if I'd ever, I'd ever work again. Mm. And we'll, t- we'll talk about all <laughs> those gonna, feelings later. We're going to get into that even more. Yes. yes but so yeah. how did it end for you? What happened after you, you missed the window? Yeah. There's mom bloggers have now taken the book space. Yeah. Yeah. So where, what happened? Well, to add to the feelings of just, I made a mistake here um, in that lobby, that hotel lobby, the conference that I'd said no to, I'm going to make space. I'm going to write this book because we only have so many hours. We can Mm -hmm. only do so many things. So I thought I'm going to write the book and not do the conference. Well, they're all meeting just feet away from me, laughing, talking about the next conference with one of my college friends who's going to design the website. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm really, I'm even missing that. This in front of me that I chose yeah. is a pile of dry bones. I just heard Bianca Oltoff teach that day on the story of um, Ezekiel prophesying over the dry bones and or God told him to, and then God breathed life into them, right? Mm. The bones all come mm-hmm. together. And I thought, okay, this is the book situation. If I try to stack the bones all up and create a little skeleton and dance it around, which would be like self-publishing. I just say, okay, I'm not going to go traditional. I will self-publish. Yep. I'm not letting God breathe life into it. I'm deciding that this is what he has for me next. So I decided to leave the dry bones there Mm -hmm. and wait for his timing, which spoiler, it came around 10 years later, but (laughs) I did have to wait. And a couple of my friends from the blogging world had started podcasts. And so I reached out to them. We were in a mastermind group through a little app called Voxer. And I said, can you help me? figure out how to start a podcast. I think I'm done writing. (laughs) I want to just talk. And so they helped me. And my first guest was my boy mom mentor in Dallas. And I didn't even have a mic. I just had my laptop. And wow, that was 2013. And you just started talking about momming, things that you would have blogged about. The way that God worked because of that agent I had, I was connected with some successful authors who I could have Mm -hmm. on as guests. And at the time, now it's really popular to have authors on your show and to hear from them. But Mm -hmm. at the time, people were used to reading from these people, but they'd never heard from them. So I was offering access to people that women wanted to hear from, but didn't have. And so it became more popular around moms and just the timing we'll talk about even later. I actually didn't know what a podcast was nine years ago. And I didn't start listening to them until about two years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you really have to, I love them now, but you really have to find your people. <laughs> you have to find what's interesting to you, how they talk. But yeah, so you are at the top, the start of the podcast game, like yeah. when they just started developing. Yeah. So you grew, you took your blogging audience with you. I assume. Which the blog I had, like, <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> Are we talking 10 people hundreds. here? Okay, we talking we're not hundreds? talking. Okay, okay. we're not this talking, is, like, that's hundreds the other, of thousands. Yeah, no, God knew. Okay. I mean, if I'd put a book yeah. out then, it wasn't like I had this massive platform right. that would be, I would be writing to. Yeah. But over the years, you started interviewing a lot of people. I mean, I was on your show. You've interviewed a lot of celebrity people and, and, and people that have wise words in yeah. Christian ministry and about motherhood and all kinds of things. So I'm assuming that because you interviewed so many people that that's what then led you to write a book about purpose. You know, you would think, but it was actually all my interactions with listeners. So oh. as the podcast is growing and it was very organic, I didn't have mm -hmm. some major marketing strategy. It was this mom listens, it helps her. She tells five friends, you know, and then yeah, it just right. grows. And through that, they're reaching out with their questions and their thoughts. And I'm hearing over and over again, this, this discontent or this fear that we were just talking about of like that stepping away mm -hmm. in their career path, or maybe it's even if they stay in the workforce, they're not able to be all in like they would like. Yep. And so they're fearful Am I missing out because of this motherhood intersection? Is motherhood all there is if they did choose to stay home? Because I'm not feeling satisfied. There's just a need for clarity and confidence and peace. And so God kind of took me on this journey that we're going to talk through in all these episodes that brought me peace and then mm -hmm. it, that I was able to communicate to other people. And so, you know, I found we were talking about the missing out. Mm -hmm. and for me personally, that was a theme all of my life. Like mm -hmm. in, in my little years, I was homeschooled mm -hmm. and my favorite song that I would sing was from the Little Mermaid. I want to be part of that world. <laughs> up where they walk, my favorite up where they movie. run, <laughs> up where they play all day in the sun. Like that was me. So you always felt like you were just missing out. Oh, you of course. FOMO all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And so uh, I think this helps with that for me. And mm -hmm. have you ever experienced FOMO? Like that negative? Oh, of course. Something fun who is happening over there. I mean, who there. doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I don't want to be a part of it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm just perfectly fine yeah. sitting over here in my corner. But um, no, I, I feel that way often. I, I have a thing. <laughs> when I, I feel like this is, this is going to be half, let's talk about purpose and half therapy. Hey, that's... <laughs> I'm That's here what for this that. podcast I'm is here for that. About. But I, I, I like being the first to know mm. and the first to tell. Okay. So I, I get really bumped when, especially when it comes to business. So because I have business partners, um, if so, <laughs> if someone figures out, especially or or hears like along, you know, the 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 chain of command if they hear something before it's mm. gotten to me first, mm. like I, I get upset with that. Mm. Or if there's an announcement to be made, I want to be the first to tell. And I realized after many years, cause I'm like, why does this bump me? Like, I, 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 I don't think I'm a control freak, but, but may, okay, maybe I am. And I realized that it makes me feel like I'm not important enough for someone to have told me first. Yeah. Like I was forgotten about. Yeah. And so, I love how like you got there. Yeah. Like you notice the behavior. Yeah. I, I either need to be the one who says first or I need to hear about it first or tell first. And okay, what's behind that? And getting curious. Yeah. Like what is behind that? And yeah. it comes down to your value and like a statement that you're yeah. repeating in your head. Exactly. And for me, it was, that's how I found this FOMO was such a strong line is I did this like... It's, I think it has a weird name. It's like a brain detox program. Okay. But you're basically just paying attention to your thoughts. We have hundreds of thoughts every mm -hmm. day. And so you would spend time journaling, like what were three dominant thoughts I had yesterday? And you would write them down and then you would narrow in on one of those three. And so one day it was, I missed out. Like whether it's your home and you're seeing 
a friend and she's getting some speaking gig that you could never go to because there's no way you could make that mm-hmm. happen. Or you are in your cubicle and you're seeing friends all playing pickleball and you're like, that would never, that can not happen for me. You're believing I'm missing out. Yeah. So I'm thinking that. And then in the process of detoxing that, I would write down and ask God, what's something you want me to think instead? That's great. And in that moment, supernaturally, he gave me the thought that if I'm in the middle of God's will, I'm never missing out. I love that. So then anytime I'm scrolling Instagram or I'm even in a moment in a conversation with a friend and they're sharing Mm -hmm. something that I'm starting to feel that feeling or Mm -hmm. have that thought process of I missed out, I would capture the thought. It's like the scripture. Yep. I would take it captive and I would replace it with this truth of if I'm in the middle of God's will, then I'm never missing out. You're right where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And you're not missing out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. The trick then. Yes. Is What's this the trick? Age old question. What is God's will? Right? So if you're saying I'm never missing out if I'm in the middle of God's will, what is it? What is God's will for me and my life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which can be really overwhelming. Yeah. Do you have the answer? <laughs> is it a, is it just like, do you say a sentence and you have that answer or is it a process? Yeah. I think that we're going to talk through it. Mm-hmm. Did you ever do the um, experiencing God study from Blackaby? It was no. eons ago. I mean, I think I, I was in not. college in the nineties. Do I need to do that? It's old. So I don't know if it holds up That's okay. still, but okay. I, I feel like the basic premise does Okay, that. Um, so God is working all the time and he is inviting us to join him. Mm-hmm. So we miss out on God's will when we don't accept those invitations. The key is to see where's God working and what is he inviting me to join him. But I also feel like that's our conversation we're going to work through is we are in different places. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out what those are and what is he inviting us into. Staying healthy is really important to me, and it's not always easy. For some people, healthcare can be too expensive, but your health is precious. One Share Health is a faith-based ministry that offers low-cost, comprehensive healthcare programs that could save you up to 50% each month. With One Share Health, you could reduce your healthcare costs and help other people at the same time. I encourage you to check them out and ask lots of questions. Find out more at my.onesharehealth.com slash Candice. That's my.onesharehealth.com slash Candice. So have he's you ever inviting str- me into a podcast right now. <laughs> that's, where, that's where he's inviting well, me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, have you struggled through that? Like finding God's will? What does that look like for you? I, I, I did. Um, I did very much and, and finding my purpose in life. And I would say the pivotal moment in my life was when I did stop working Mm -hmm. for 10 years. Now, mind you, I have worked since I was five years old consistently. So I recognize that not everyone has my life experience. It's, it's a little different. So at 22 years old, when I was married and decided that I wasn't going to work anymore. Well, 22 years old is usually the age where you start working. It's like you're, Uh that's where you're finding yourself and finding your career, except I had done that in reverse. I had an entire career and then had children but the drive in me as a 22 year old was like, uh, but if I'm, if I stop working, I'm actually taking a step back yeah. to raise my kids. Yeah. And it, I was very scared about it, even though I wanted to do it. So let me say, I made the choice to stay home with my kids mm-hmm. because I wanted to be the one to raise them. But it took me a good two years to really, to really find myself in motherhood and, kind of resolve to being a, a full-time mom. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't easy. And, um, but in that, I, I look back and 
I would not say that my purpose was motherhood, but God helped me find my purpose during those 10 years of being a a stay-at-home mom because that's when my relationship with him grew. Mm -hmm. That's when I became intentional about my relationship with God. And if I had been working like I always had, I just, I know myself and I know how how occupied my mind gets and busy and creative. And I love all those things, but I don't, I, I, at least in my younger years, wouldn't have made space for God then, but motherhood gave me that time and space, Mm. which kind of sounds crazy with three really young kids, but it was like when it was nap time or when they started school, that's when I would start talking to God and praying and having Bible study. And, Mm -hmm. and I found my purpose was in my relationship with him. I mean, that's the big, big picture. Yeah. So, no. but I I struggled with it. Let me tell you. Well, and what's awesome about your story is like you said, it doesn't fit the mold. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we feel that hopelessness or the lack of clarity is we're comparing to some mold. Mm -hmm. Who's mold? I mean, no story in the Bible is the same. Mm -hmm. God doesn't use a single person exactly the same, but we somehow hold up some mold as if we're falling short of it or we're too much for it. And I can so relate to finding God through the journey of motherhood. That's what he used to grow my faith. And I think if you are listening and you're not a mom, it doesn't mean you missed out on growing your faith. It just means, Mm -hmm. uh, according to my friend, Kat Armstrong, who came on the show once, I will quote people (laughs) who I've learned from a lot because it's been a gift. Um, She is a mom and she's been to seminary and written Bible studies. But she came on and she said, if you're a believer... Jesus gave us our ultimate calling, which is to go and make disciples. So there's your calling. Yep. Check. Yep. (laughs) Now, where you do that are the various assignments you get throughout your life. Mm -hmm. And so for you in that season, from five to 22, the assignment was wherever he had you on full house or other places. Mm -hmm. And then he said, okay, I'm assigning you to be home with these three kids. Yep. And then now it's assigning you to this podcast, you know, all these different yes. places. And I think that that is something that has brought me a lot of peace. It's also something I can give other moms, particularly who are like, is motherhood my ultimate calling? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, because right. I'm not finding it to be fulfilling. Yeah. Uh, or my friends who aren't moms, if that's mm-hmm. the ultimate calling then I'm missing out somehow. Right. So if we can, instead of comparing, contrasting to some formula life yeah. and instead say, okay, God, where are you assigning me? Like I said, where are you inviting me into? Mm-hmm. And all those characters in the Bible over and over and over again, who are being called by God and assigned yep. different roles, whether it's a prophet role, whether it's John the Baptist making a way for Jesus to come. They each played a part in this bigger story that he's working out. Which is so wonderful because I think if we all followed a formula, again, how boring would it be? And we would never, we would never feed each other in the sense that teach each other because we're all different people and we've had different experiences. And because our paths are different, we get to share those and bring encouragement to one another or a different perspective to someone else. Yeah. I mean, I think the only thing like we were talking about not wanting to miss out. Mm -hmm. Really the only way you miss out is when you don't accept those invitations Mm -hmm. or like the characters we see in the Bible who try to manipulate the story. You know, maybe um, Abraham, he's assigned to go, but then along the way he lies about his wife, says it's, (laughs) she's his sister. Sister. (laughs) Like, uh, you know, we have got Jacob, he pretends to be his brother. We're, We're manipulating and not, trusting God's promise and invitation into the good things he's doing for Mm -hmm. us. And so we actually miss out like, because sometimes we don't think they're good. That's the problem too. Like sometimes it's not what we want Mm -hmm. and we don't see the goodness. We can't see the bigger picture. So you just can sit and sulk in that. Like, well, why God, this isn't what I want. This doesn't look shiny right now. Yeah. And I think in those years when I was home with kids and I thought I was going to write the book then, oh my goodness. I'm so glad I didn't (laughs) because I mean, mine aren't even out of the house yet, but the things I would have said, the bricks I would have tied around mom's necks that weren't life-giving that now I'm like, oh, oh, thank you that you didn't let me write that book, you know? So I think you're not, 
too young. Mm. God used David. Mm -hmm. You're not too old. I mean, Sarah was what? In her hundreds Mm -hmm. Uh, or a hundred. It's not too late. And you don't have to do it perfectly. That's what I love too about all of the examples in the Bible. There's room for error and humanity and limitedness Yep. and allowing him. I always read the Bible and I read for what's my part in this passage? Like what's a command or what's an instruction Mm -hmm. and what's God's part? Like, where is it saying he's our salvation? He's our sustainer. He's our comforter. He brings the justice. I don't have to worry about the outcome of all of it. Right. And that's free. That's what I'm constantly looking for, which uh, it, when I read the Bible, which was a, a, a big part of my my time with Tara Lee from last season and doing is always looking for God in the Bible and mm. not necessarily myself. Yeah. I mean, I want to relate to people in the Bible, but I want to keep looking for God's goodness and greatness and his character throughout because he always restores. I mean, that's what it, he's so patient with us and he he wants us to be in relation with him. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we talked about some of the assignments, mm-hmm. but do you have any other stages or places that you feel like? Well... Yeah. So obviously motherhood, being, being a wife has been a big assignment in my life. I've been married 26 years. Those are, there's some big roller coaster moments in, in, in that. And, and still, I mean, I, I've got a lifetime, however long that is, and my husband's ahead of me. So being a wife is an assignment. Uh, And then I certainly have assignments throughout my career that I can look at. I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of things that I do and uh, companies that I own. I mean, I am an entrepreneur and have several businesses. Yeah. And so God's assigned me to this public space, but n- not just as an actor or a director, but with uh, products and clothing and this podcast. And there's a there's a lot of things. So I, I do wear a lot of different hats, but they are all very specific assignments. But I I'm always looking for God in those assignments, mm-hmm. particularly within work, yeah. because I don't, I don't work without purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all the things that I do, I'm, I'm trying to help viewers or listeners and just to guide them in relationship with God. Yeah. That's discipling. <laughs> yeah. Like we over, like we overcomplicate sometimes discipling Mm -hmm. and what that means to go and make disciples. Like if you're showing God's love, revealing the gospel, wherever you go, that's, that's it. It's not too complicated. I love that. You just broke it down. Broke it down. Broke it down. Okay. So I shared with you about, you know, the book not Mm -hmm. going through with the agent. There's another time that my writing was rejected. Tell me. Okay. So. In fifth grade, <laughs> okay, I was homeschooled, like I said, and I called a boy and asked him to go with me because that's what you do. Yep. First, I- his mom answered the phone, <laughs> horror upon horrors, and then I had to tell her it was Heather Price. And uh, she went and got the boy and he got on the phone and I said, will you go with me? Mm-hmm. And he said, no. <gasps> I said, thank you. And I hung up. (laughs) But in eighth grade, I wrote about that story and I submitted it to a magazine hoping that I would win their writing contest. This magazine was for all girls. (laughs) It was a James Dobson magazine called Brio. I remember Brio. I did not win the contest. Oh, but you're heartbroken uh, and you didn't win the contest about your heartbroken story. (laughs) Yes. But, but I did get in the magazine. I had sent in a picture of me and my younger brother where we were, you know, in that moment, I had my arm around him. Mm -hmm. We did fight other moments, but it's a sweet picture. And so they thought it was their favorite picture that was submitted. So they put that in the magazine. Most loved photo. Oh, the, sweet. Yeah. And the magazine came out March 1992, which you do all the math. Even though 1992 <laughs> feels like just yesterday to it me, does. it was 30 years ago this last March. Oh, don't say Almost it. 31 don't say years. It. Yeah. And guess who was the cover of that magazine? 
<clears throat> Spoiler. <laughs> What's it? It was me. Yeah. Get a close up on that one. Um, so wow. let's just flip through here. I don't know why I'm saluting. <laughs> why am I saluting? <laughs> you need a salute. Sorry. I you think my mom probably had me do that pose. Probably. <laughs> and there's like a whole, like, I could so have what, taken out this whole poster a, of you. Wow, oh my a gosh, I should do it. So, so where wait, is like, your hold on. photo? Here we go. There I am. <laughs> that is so cute. This little homeschool girl. How crazy girl. is that? That yeah. we're in that magazine together. But think about her. Okay, let's think about sweet little 13-year-old Heather who's thinking she's missing out being homeschooled. Uh-huh. That's where it all started, right? Like everyone's oh. out living their life and I'm home with my brother <laughs> in the woods, playing in the woods, which we'll talk about later. But I didn't, I was seen in this moment and I had no clue that 30 years later, I would be sitting with my fave, DJ Tanner. <laughs> and we'd be podcasting and together. Be, what was podcasting back then? I mean, you just don't know. Like, yeah. do the thing in front of you. Be faithful with the assignments he's given you and trust him with where it's going. Because you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, that's a good word. That's a really good word. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that's it for, I think we talked about a lot. Yeah. We've kind of set up what we're going to be talking about throughout the season. I hope you all will continue to join us, but we are going to do something in every single episode at the end. Uh, this is, we, we are going to be answering a listener question. So we had more than 2000 questions come in because people are so hungry for support and community and to know that they aren't alone in this journey. Some of the questions we had were very hard questions, um, some stories, and we also had some more lighthearted questions as well as some comments. So at the end of every episode, we're going to take one of those questions and we're going to answer them here together. So our very first question comes from Raina, and it's a perfect setup to kick the season off. And I promise you, we did not make this <laughs> question <didn't>. up. <laughs> but Raina asked, what can you do when you have self-doubt in life? Am I making the right career choice? What is my purpose in life? How can I refocus on my purpose? So mm. I'm going to... I'm going <laughs> to let you take that question because yeah. I think it will be a summary of what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. The book that we're going to be talking about that I wrote, um, the intro story is a really vulnerable story of me. We, my husband and I had just gone over the budget. I asked him to, I was like, I'm curious now that I'm doing podcasting and I'm helping mm. so much with our finances. Um, how are we doing? Well, he showed me and I just felt defeat. Like I thought that this thing I was doing full time was contributing more than it actually was. So I end up going back to bed crying, like what a waste. If mm -hmm. I had stayed in the career I was in before kids uh, and tried to do it a little bit more and then gone back to it when the kids went back in school, I could be making a lot more money as a speech language pathologist than a podcaster. And I just felt defeat mm -hmm. in my choice and like I'd messed up somehow in serving our family. And then it was, it was Sunday. So we need to get ready for church. And I was like, well, you're not going to take me down twice. Okay. So I'm not going to miss church because yeah. I'm having this little pity party. So we get ready, we go to church. And that day there was a guest speaker and he had a word that hopefully it'll help Raina too. He said, you can trust God with the results. If you are working as hard as you can for God, and wonder if anyone sees you, if it matters at all, God sees you. God honors those who honor him. Even if you don't see the outcome in this lifetime, he sees your heart, your sacrifices, and your dedication to him. And my hope is as we work through this framework over this season that will give Raina even more confidence in where she is and comfort and clarity that she needs to know that she is right where she belongs. Yep. And God sees her. Yes, he does. Do you ever feel like you're trying to figure everything out and don't even know where to start? We have something special just for you this season. Heather and I want to help you discover how your gifts, talents, and experiences can equip you to face whatever season of life you're in. We have a free downloadable PDF with tips to help you discover right where you belong. Go to Candice.com to download it. We think it's going to change how you see and engage with life. There's also a link on the website where you can order Heather's new book, Right Where You Belong. 
along. And there's also a link in our show notes. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved.